Hello everybody, my name is Dick Coughlin and eight years ago I did a series of videos over a course of about three months, one a week, that were called the Dick's O'Clock New. And it's one of those uh, series of videos that I used to do that I'm constantly getting people, well, you know, like a couple, one or two, you know, I'd like three people in the last eight years, requests that I bring back. Fuck it, why not, just for the hell of it. However, this is not the Dick's O'Clock News, so let me present to you the first ever episode of Brother Neuro Clock News. Oh shit, I haven't got an intro. No, I used to have an intro with some like funny music and like some graphic. I haven't got that. I tell you, I'll do something really, really quick, sort of like something really basic, and I'll just come up with a tune. And uh, you know, if you want to make something, fuck it. You know, send it. I don't, I don't know if I'll do another one, but in case I do, but anyway. So yeah, anyway, intro. Oi! I said, boy, oh, what are you looking at, you little rich boy? We're poor, round here, no rent, no more. You could get rock, rock, you could get rock, roll, real. Oh, yeah, because my man is ill. Oh, because my man is ill. Oh, for real, yeah, you know my man is ill. Yes, my man is ill. Now, as is the way with the modern world, every two and a half hours, there's another ten dozen news stories that I could talk about and then add to, add to over and over again. So, this is probably going to be a lot more than I thought, but then I thought, fuck it, why don't we just get the last month of stuff that I can find vaguely interesting out of the way. Let's start off with the fact that for the first almost entire month of January in America, they had no government. And it's a credit to Donald Trump that almost nobody noticed, apart from the 800,000 people who were starving to death and didn't have any uh, food or rent to pay. But apart from those couple of people, everything was running very smoothly. However, he was supposed to be getting money for this fucking imaginary wall that he wants to build, which you don't fucking want, but he was supposed to get money for the wall, and he kept saying, he'll do it, I'll do it, do it. No, and he didn't get it, and then he caved and he came back and saying, right, but we're going to have another one in three weeks, but, you know, if listener get the money for... And it wouldn't be so bad were it not for the fact that this meant that he had to concede defeat to Nancy Pelosi to Nancy fucking Pelosi, and you know, you know it was bad when you see this tweet on that day, the end of the shutdown, from the, you know, the queen bitch herself, Skeletor, in drag, and Coulter. Good news for George Herbert Walker Bush. As of today, he is no longer the biggest wimp ever to serve as President of the United States. For me, the bigger one was when I saw this tweet by Mike, definitely, definitely not a rapist, Cernovich, who posted this. Trump is a broken man. It's over for him. He then went on to say that Pelosi is the alpha. Now, of all the things that Donald Trump has managed to fucking break in terms of what we should be expecting to happen on a day-to-day -day basis. I think his biggest achievement is the fact he has now managed to create a reality where me, Mike Cernovich and Ann Coulter are all on the same page when it comes to him being a cunt. Now, Ann Coulter and Mike Cernovich weren't the only ones. There were many, many other people who came out and were like, oh, Donald, you big fucking dickless whinging twat. But my favourite one was, of course, there's always one, there's always one of these fuckers, was posted by some random fucking noob arsehole who are, whose name is irrelevant called Jordan Sather. And Jordan wrote the following. I'm seeing quite a few alt-media personalities turn on Donald Trump today, all at once, very suddenly. It's as if... They are getting orders from somewhere to do this. Controlled op gonna controlled op. Try and imagine living in a, re in a world where you are so bonkers fucking mental. You are making the argument that Anne Coulter, Anne fucking Coulter, is controlled opposition. No more drugs for that man. Trying to keep up with Donald Trump tweets is like trying to paint the fourth bridge with a fucking toothbrush. However, my favourite story that he tweeted about, and this might be one of my favourite fucking ridiculous, bonkers conspiracy theories of the year so far, if it's got to be in the top ten by the end of it, was this one that he posted on the 18th of January. Border Rancher. We've found prayer rugs out here. It's unreal. That's from Washington Examiner. People coming across the southern border from many countries 
some of which would be a big surprise. Yeah, well, I mean, they're only coming from one country across the southern border. They're, I mean, you know, there's only so many. If you say they're, if you tell me they're coming from across the southern border from Poland, I mean, they're not, are they? Because that's not where it, there's only one country you can come in from the southern border. And why would you try and enter? You know, if you didn't live in, in, in that part of the world, why would you try and enter America through fucking Mexico? Particularly in this fucking... You'd go around the top, wouldn't you? But anyway, I love this story. Now, a lot of people were quick to point out that this uh, the thing that he's claiming, there's no source for this, it's just random border rancher. But the, the, the people are bringing up the fact that this is eerily similar to... Um, something that happens in a film called Sicario 2. I don't even want to get into that because I don't fucking know nor care and it's irrelevant either way because this is the world, this is the day and age when reality is whatever the fuck we want. I want you to fucking just, let's take that at face value, what they're claiming here. That there are Muslim prayer rugs being found on the border from people coming in to the United States. So what they're trying to argue is there are a load of Muslims coming from Mexico, right, who, I don't know why they, how they got there, it doesn't matter, but there's a load of Muslims in Mexico who are trying to enter the United States illegally, and they are so, so devout, and so extreme is their, is their dedication to Islam, that these Muslims have got with them, the only thing they're carrying are their prayer rugs, that's the only thing they've made sure to bring, and they're running across the border, and as they get across the border, I don't know why, whether there was a slope, whether they missed something, they tripped on a rug, but whatever it is, butterfingers, all of them drop their prayer rugs, and rather than stop, and take two seconds to fucking crouch down, pick it up, and then keep going. These guys literally were like, no, fuck it, keep running, Islam. Come on, come on, Abdul, for fuck's sake, we'll get another one. It's just a pissing rug. I mean, what kind? So these guys are so devout that they made sure the only thing they brought were their prayer rugs, but they are so kind of laissez fair, fucking moderate about it, they're like, fuck it, we'll get another one later. Like, There's probably loads in Texas, no one will notice. What the fuck are you talking about? So, anyway, there's this guy called Ralph Northam. I know, up until last week, I'd never fucking heard of him. I'm pretty sure from this week onwards, I'm never going to hear from him again. I'm sure he's going to regret the fact that anybody who remembers him after this is going to remember him for what we are going to remember him for. There's this guy, Ralph Northam. He is the governor of Virginia. And he gets in a bit of hot water after someone uncovers this photo, apparently taken at his high school yearbook in 1984. This is the picture. Now, if you're sat there going, well, which one of those is Ralph Northam? I would say to you, I don't know, but does it matter? Is, there, is either one of those two options preferable? If you're a white politician in this day and age, is there either one of those things better than the other? I would argue no, but then I think everything's fucking racist. So this comes out, Ralph Northam in 1984, wearing blackface. Yes, apparently he was the one on the left. This is the best bit. The first thing he did was actually the right thing to do. He released a statement saying the following. Earlier today, a website published a photograph of me from my 1984 medical school yearbook in a costume that is clearly racist and offensive. I am deeply sorry for the decision I made to appear as I did in this photo and for the hurt and dis hurt that decision caused then and now. This behavior is not in keeping with who I am today and the values I have fought for for throughout my career in the military, in medicine and public service. But I want to be clear, I understand how this decision shakes Virginians' faith in that commitment. I recognise that it will take time and serious effort to heal and damage this conduct has caused. I am ready to do that important work, the first step of an apology and blah, blah, blah. A lot of people were calling for him to step down and resign immediately, all of the main prominent Democrats, all of the people trying to run for president. That's understandable. I personally sat there and thought, you know what? Ralph, you've said your piece, it, it was 1984, we all make mistakes when we're younger, Ralph, and you said you've learned from it, you, you, you regret it, you've moved on, it was, a ba it was a big mistake, you could leave it there, and in this day and age, even though there's pressure on you, give it a couple of days, they'll find some cover cunt to fucking move on to, they'll get, but you, it's gone, it's disposable, and, you know, you're just a footnote in history, and eventually you would have got, probably got, 
you know, people's trust back and everyone would have fucking forgiven you. But he didn't decide to do that. No, what he decided to do was the exact opposite of that and decided to come out the next day and try to, instead of having, even though he's already admitted to that it was him and he regrets it and it was wrong and it was racist and that was him, right, and he did that, he decides to try and say, well, actually, he tries to sort of change his story. But in doing so, in changing his story, he actually made things worse because it obviously there was an implication in him changing it. And what he came out and actually said initially was in this press conference, which I don't know why he was allowed to make this. He must have had some team beneath him who was saying that deep gaffer tape, rugby tackle the cunt, and fucking staple his mouth shut. He comes out and he says, I believe now and then, I believe now and then, I am not either of the people in this photo. Now, he's saying he believes now, but he was certain yesterday. So that must mean he, you know, it was, he could accept the fact that could have been him, but he's still not sure which one, but now he's not even sure for certain that that's, He's either one of them or this photo. So what that means is that this guy dressed up in blackface and or as a Klansman so frequently that for the last 24 hours, having just seen a picture of two people dressed in blackface and a Klansman's outfit, he easily believed that, that was him. But it wasn't because this was a different... Like, So how many times, let me ask you, how many times do you have to be dressed up as a Klansman and in blackface and be photographed in that in such a way that in like 20 years from then from now or 30 years from now when people show you a picture you're not going to have a clue whether or not not only whether or not you're in that photo but if you were which one is you he then starts bizarrely even more referring to himself in the third person like he's the fucking rock this was not me in that picture. That was not Ralph Northam. And if that wasn't enough, he then decides to voluntarily advance another example of him dressing up in blackface, like which there are no photos of, so he didn't have to tell us this, right? He then, but then he justifies it by saying that he recalled going to a dance contest dressed as Michael Jackson. Ironically, the one black guy who, if he'd only waited another 10 years, he could have gone in whiteface and pulled it off. He, he then says, I had the shoes, I had, the, I had a glove, and I used just a little bit of shoe polish under my or on my cheeks. And the reason I used very little bit of shoe polish is because, I don't know if anybody's ever tried that, you cannot get shoe polish off that easily. No, no, Ralph, no one's ever tried that. Virtually no one. If they have, it certainly not. How many times did you have to black up? So you're telling me you did it enough and you didn't, you couldn't get it off. So that meant you must have walked around for a while or ever scrubbed it off. Uh, then you had to experiment with how little can you, how much can you, how many fucking, do you have a problem, Ralph? Just because you're dressed as an actual black person who exists doesn't count. What is wrong with you? You've got a problem. Then one of the journalists there, who clearly realised that this was... Well, this guy's fucked. You know, he asked, can you still moonwalk? And Ralph Northam stops and goes... Mm? And his wife... His wife, who I'm sorry, darling, too late. You have failed him as a wife, you're f as a minder, as a policeman. You fuck your job was... You should have stepped in before he left the friggin' house that morning. It was too late in the day for you to sit there and try and save this absolute fucking knob who you fucking married to stop them and go, inappropriate. Inappropriate now? Holy fucking shit. It's amazing. Fair play, Ralph. You absolute fucking spanner. Now, despite the fact that there have been multiple people in Virginia and you've got the epic, wonderful story of Ralph Northen fucking imploding fucking over the course of a few days over his blackface incident, neither, none of those are actually the most fucking shocking blackface incident that has occurred this month, which, by the way, is February, which is Black History Month. And at the moment, I think we are literally at one for one, one per day, one blackface incident in America per fucking day. Now, this one I'm going to show you is one you probably haven't heard of. It didn't get a lot of coverage because it was a smaller story. It wasn't a politician. Ralph Northam probably took a lot of the heat off this woman. But I, I'm going to play you the news clip it's, it, and, and respond to it as and when it goes. It's about 90, it's about 90 seconds long. But this, and I want you to keep in mind, 
This wasn't done in 1984. This wasn't someone dressing up as Michael Jackson. This was not... It, this, this happened a week ago. Hit it. A local school under fire for allowing blackface in the classroom. Take a look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Allowing... That is not allowing blackface. That is the full... Fuck, that is the, that is the man from Del Monte, he say yes. What in the hell? It was, she hasn't just got... She, I mean, if you're going to do something wrong, do it right. But this... This was last week. Look at that smile. Oblivious as fuck. And why has she got a vagina on her fucking dress? It happened last Thursday at Victory Christian School in Carmichael. Now, I don't give a fuck whether the fact this is a Christian school you can say, oh, these people are a bit, you know, cut. No, no, absolutely no. There is no fucking way on planet Earth there is any excuse that someone is not aware that she did not. And uh, to, now, in all fairness to the woman, as you're about to find out, she's not the only one culpable because, to her credit, she did ask permission. Superintendent John Huffman says an elementary chapel speaker dressed up as a Central African native woman to portray missionary David Livingston and his work in late 19th century Africa. Okay, that makes no fucking sense. Right, she dressed up as that to portray missionary David. David Livingston did not look like that. Dress up as David Pissing Livingston. Okay, don't dress up like that. That makes no sense. He says the speaker intended to resemble the character in appearance. We know what she intended, you daft cunt. That's exactly the problem. Telling Fox 40 in a statement that the decision was made, quote, in an effort to bring authenticity to her role. Well, that didn't work, did it? She wore a typical native dress and headdress. She also used makeup to darken her skin. We know what blackface is, you fucking pillock. Skin tone on her arms, shoulders. Her shoulders weren't even showing, so that shows how deep into this character she was. And face. But the choice to use blackface in a school environment is sparking outrage among some students. <laughs> and parents. So much so that the superintendent sent out an email to families the very same day apologizing for the... I love how we're told that him sending out an email the very same day is somehow a way of gauging how severe the fucking outrage and offense was. It's like, oh, I'm gonna have to email them now. Poor judgment call. Poor judgment. Poor judgment is one way of putting it. Rating in part, this presentation was in no way meant to be hurtful or disrespectful. You... Pratt. I ask forgiveness from those who have been hurt by this. Fuck you, I'm joining Islam. Huffman elaborating further to Fox 40, telling us in a statement, quote, I was wrong to allow the use of makeup no matter how innocent the intention. Do you think, John? As it has offended some of my students and parents, I should have anticipated that this could be offensive. Well done. You, yes, you fucking should. You absolute fucking ring. And I apologize to my students and parents, asking to be forgiven for hurting them. Let's leave America now, folks, because it's not fair to fucking just pick on America, because unfortunately we live in a world where we're in Britain, we can't even be smug about it anymore, because we're in the same fucking stupid pile of self-inflicted bullshit that they kind of are. Except ours has got, like, less than fucking 50 days left to go. Now, I have said before that people like UKIP, and things like it have, have made satire more difficult and they, they've made satire almost impossible. But I was wrong because every time they exceed it, they exceed what is capable. And I swear to Christ, this whole fucking thing is one big elaborate prank by Chris Morris. Right? There was a, there was a tweet sent out um, which was, had a video in it of a guy who is a, 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 a UKIP member. And... I'm just going to read you the tweet. Check this out. I mean, this is the moment where comedy... You want to talk about the left destroyed comedy? No, this killed comedy right here. A Brexiteer called Dr. Max Gammon. Dr. Max Gammon. I quit. I'm out. I've got nothing. I've got no... There's no... I can't add anything. There's no spin. His name is Max Gammon. It's like being some sort of anti-SJW, you know, internet personality who's called Dave Shitlord. Kill me. And with Brexit looming in just about a month and a half away, 
Where is our Prime Minister? Is she off, was she off negotiating a new deal? Was she off trying to do so? Was she off doing anything productive? No! I will show you what Theresa May was doing last fucking week in this tweet posted by fucking Yuri Geller! My dear Theresa, do you remember what they told you when you came to my house? Can you, my Twitter followers, guess what it was? She was probably there begging, say anything. Literally, you're our last hope. Do anything, Yuri. Right, if you're just to fucking do something. Men, Donald Tusk, make this all go away, you fucking Israeli cunt. Do something. Look at this. There's a picture of her. Right, look at this photo. A con artist. A known fraudster who has lied and deceived and exploited millions for years standing next to a cunt who bent spoons for a living. And you know what the sad thing is? In any other fucking point in history, the Prime Minister seeking the advice and counsel of Yuri Geller would be a national embarrassment. But it doesn't even make this week's top 50 dumbest fucking things that happened in this country. That's 2019 for you. But moving on to a very recent story. This has happened literally over the last couple of days. And it's wonderful. It really is. And it involves this fucking absolute pillock called Candice Owens. Who is one of the... Who is a double token. She's a twofer. She's a woman and she's black. And she's there serving off for all the oppressed white men, or as she calls them, the cops, apparently. There was video that came out where she was doing a Q&A session because there are people in this world who seriously want to ask her questions. And I'll probably say to you what I say to people who ask me for important, insightful advice. If you're looking at her and thinking she's got the answers, you are asking the wrong fucking questions. But she put her foot in it quite royally when she made comments. She was asked about nationalism, and she went down the Hitler road, and she kind of... Well, again, this is where the fucking right fail to realise. They'll sit there and talk about the left-wing censorship and left-wing smear campaigns. What they don't realise is we don't need to. Eventually, you, sh you bastards will fuck yourselves royally. When asked about nationalism, asked by a member of the audience about nationalism in Western politics, Owens brought up Adolf Hitler. No, Candice, no, 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 don't, darling, no, no. But she carried on. She said, I actually don't have any problems at all with the word nationalism. Well, you know, no, I don't have any problems with the word nationalism. The word nationalism is fine, it's a collection of letters. But I'm glad you don't have any problems. You can spell a lousy clap. I think that the definition gets poisoned by elitists that actually want globalism. Jews. Globalism is what I don't want. Whenever we say nationalism, the first thing people think about, at least in America, is Hitler. Yeah, pretty much universal that one. He was a national socialist. She continued, but if Hitler, and this is the moment, remember this, this could be her Milo Yiannopoulos on Joe Rogan moment, this could be the thing that makes Candy Owens untenable. She went on to say this, but if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine. Two letters. OK. No! Everyone's focusing on the OK fine part. But here's the bit. She then goes on, and what she says afterwards is arguably even more fucking astoundingly ignorant. The problem... The problem is that he wanted and had dreams outside of Germany. He wanted to globalise. Candice Owens thinks that the biggest problem with Hitler was that he was just too ambitious. He wanted everybody to be German. No, Candice. If for no, no other reason, here's the first problem. He was fucking Austrian, you stupid cow. He wanted everybody speaking German. No, he didn't. But the next sentence is, is comp I have no idea what she meant by this. She, he wanted everybody to look a different way. No! The 
that's literally the exact opposite of what he wanted. The, he wanted no... He, the whole point of what he was doing was to make everyone as, as, di as less different, as similar as possible. What do you mean he wanted everyone to look different? To me, that's not nationalism. Oh, isn't it? Well, that will do for me. In thinking about how we could go down a bad, bad down a line, I don't really have a problem with nationalism. I really don't. I find it fucking hilarious that these people are complaining about the fact that nationalism gets a bad rap because people always bring up Hitler. If that's your position, fine, argue it. Don't just say, to me, that's not nationalism. Because you can either do that, and if you want to do that, okay, fine, but you can't then use Adolf Hitler as your first go-to counterpoint when someone brings up the word socialism. Because Hitler called himself a national socialist, so therefore he was a socialist. To which you always reply, so do you think the democratic, do you think North Korea is a democratic people's republic because they call themselves that? To which that point they fuck off and run away. You've got to pick one. You either have, you know, Hitler was not nationalism and, you know, it gets a bad rap because of Hitler, or socialism, ah, Hitler. It's your choice. And, and here's how you know Candy Sowing is fucked, is that no one is attempting to put their neck on the line to come forward and defend what you, she said because there's almost no way you can. I mean, what defence do you come up with? Only one real person has tried to come forward to defend Candy Owens and bless him, he tried, but it's Paul Joseph Watson. And the sad thing is, even Paul Joseph Watson knows, even he knew that he could not really defend what she said. You couldn't even say she was taken out of context or it was... But because in order for con taken out of context to work as an argument, you have to be able to imagine a context in which that fucking sentence that she said, that statement, is actually not that bad. But it's not. There is no context. She said, OK, fine. I'm telling you. <laughs> but Paul had a go. However, unfortunately, in... In attempting to defend Candice Owens, Paul Joseph Watson had to resort to something. Uh, he had to do something that was... Now, I don't expect, you know, intellectual honesty and consistency. I don't expect that from Paul Joseph Watson. But sometimes there are some moments when your, your hypocrisy is far too much to the point where... Even your most hardened info warriors were not even trying to fucking, you know, back him up on this one. This was how he defended Candice Owens when uh, this statement was reported in BuzzFeed. Because you know Watson's got a hate boner for BuzzFeed. So he said, BuzzFeed, a bunch of privileged white journalists trying to smear a black woman, Candice Owens, as a racist. Truly pathetic. I'm sorry, Paul. Did you refer to the BuzzFeed journalist as privileged white journalist? White privilege. So, white privilege is now a thing that you, are, are, you, know, you accept now. Does white, white privilege now exist now? At this, this now? You've just worked it out, have you? You've just noticed. And they're, they're trying to smear a black woman White privileged men trying to smear a black woman truly... Paul, you wouldn't be engaging in identity politics there, would you? Where you're literally saying because these guys are white and she's a black woman. Paul, what have you done, mate? Every single time you, t you bemoan... ID politics, are you just calling everyone racist or white pri or bring up the concept of privilege? This will be retweeted at you ad infinitum till the end of time. Memo bis punita della cotton. Thank you, Paul. And good luck, Candies. I look forward to seeing whoever replaces you. Or maybe not. I don't know. It won't matter. You're all the same to me. Now, folks, there is one more thing I want to talk about. However, 
Before I do that, it does involve me having to go back a few years and show you something. Now, those of you who are familiar with me uh, may be familiar with my stand-up comedy shows. My last, my most recent stand-up comedy show that I performed up until 2016 was called Anti-White PC Mangina Activate. And, uh, you know, I'll leave a link to the full show below. But uh, some of you obviously may be new around here and you may not be familiar. Either way, in order for me to really sort of, you know, to make my point, I'm going to need to refresh your memory. And I'm going to play for you in full the final routine, the last routine that I do in that show, in which I talk about a a a a, um, a line a a a, a line of stores, a um, chain of stores called Zara, who do clothing and and make fashion, you know, who are fashion designers, make their own clothes, and their kind of issue and problematic history with making, should we say, slightly problematic clothing. Here's the clip. I'll play it in full. Uh, I understand that it's difficult these days when you know people do feel that political correctness has gone mad, and I do understand that there's probably people in here you've probably been got you know pounced on or you've probably got in trouble for saying something that you had you never meant it to be hateful or bigoted. You didn't mean or think you were going to offend someone. You just may be out of touch. You didn't realise you know it's a, that's, that word means something different than where you've grown up. And you've now been you've now been labelled as a bigot because of it, right? It's happened to me before, and I, I understand that. It's not, oh, it has, believe it or not. But, <laughs> you know, you know, but, but I understand that that's annoying. But what I will say to you is this: I think that's more preferable than the other end of the spectrum that we used to have, which is to a point where you're so politically incorrect that you're actually completely socially and historically unaware all the time. And I'm going to give you one example, a good example of, 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 of what I'm talking about. There's a, there's a fashion designer, a clothing store, uh, you've got one in Brighton, it's called Zara, Z-A-R-A. Are you familiar with this? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course you are. Mostly the women, because that's it, they sell women's clothes. But um, they do sell children's clothes as well. Now last year, Zara introduced this new line of children's clothes. Uh, and one particular item was a jumper that was for children aged three to five years old. And now I'm going to show you a picture of this jumper. Now you need to keep this in mind. This wasn't a design that was made, never manufactured and then leaked out. That could be forgivable, that's not really a story. This was not only designed, it was approved, it was manufactured en masse, it was marketed and advertised, it was fucking packed up and shipped out to all the Zara stores, it was put on the fucking shelves of every Zara across Europe and the world, and it took a customer on the first day of the sales to come in and point out what was wrong with this item of clothing. And again, I get the impression I don't need to fucking tell you exactly what's wrong or uh, why someone might be offended by this item of clothing. <laughs> This was literally a jump. Now, first of all, first off, they were marketing this as a French sheriff's jumper. <laughs> now that deserves a fucking rant on its own, surely? The French well-known cowboy culture there, haven't they? <laughs> but, this, but this is what they were marketing. A customer had to point out what was wrong with this. Well, I mean, I'm assuming they were. I mean, for all I know, the customer was going, those jumpers, do you do them in bulk? <laughs> a couple of million of them maybe <laughs> and, and there might be one or two holocaust historians or experts in here who want to quibble over the fact that ah the fucking stripes are going the wrong way in the concentration those stripes are going horizontally in the concentration camps the stripes were going vertically yes they were I'm going to give them a mulligan on that one but I think we can say it may, the, the stripes were indeed vertical in, uh, in the concentration camps, which is probably why they all look so thin in all those pictures that you see. Right, but the... <laughs> <laughs> no, because there is a problem with anti-Semitism. Look, I'll tell you, I, I went on you know, Google Maps. You go on Google Maps, you type in something, and it comes up and tells you a location. Right? I went on Google Maps and I typed in Jews in London, and look, it's got them all fucking listed there. <laughs> Why is Google telling me where the fucking Jews are all are? It's a bit fucking dodgy, isn't it? I don't want to. They're not salmon. We don't need to track them for migration purposes, do we? <laughs> it's in London spread out a bit as well, lads. Have you seen your new mayor? Fucking get it sorted right now. But no, so you've got that, so you've got this problem with this jumper in Zara. Now, 
The problem is with this jumper is you could put it down to look. We all have a brain fart. We've all missed something, haven't we? We've all mi missed something that we look back and go, "How the fuck did I miss that? That was blindingly fucking obvious. I should have seen that." It's possible on an infinite timeline, seven billion people on the planet. Eventually, everyone's brain fart is going to align. The sun is in the seventh moon of Jupiter, and it just so happened that all of the people involved in Zara, all those thousands of people, all missed it, and they didn't realise. And then they got pointed out. Like, Fucking hell, you're right. It does. It looks like that. But the problem with that is that Zara have have done this before, right? A couple of years previously, Zara released this handbag. Now, you're probably looking at that, it's a bit garish, there's nothing wrong with it. If I move my hand, can you see there's a bright green swastika on this handbag? Now, when this got released, and again, this was someone else designed and made this, this was a private uh, designer, and Zara's excuse was, well, we didn't see the bag from the other side, we only saw one side of it in a photo. I'm like, well, maybe, just maybe, ask them to bring two pictures on the off chance that they fucking crocheted Rodney King being curb stopped by a clansman on the other fucking side of the bag. <laughs> It'll save you a lot of PR problems in the future. Right, they then got fucking. They then got sued by a Jewish gay American who worked for them, right, and that all kicked off. But this, this all kicked off, and the president of Zara had to come out and make a public statement saying, like, you know, these things, you know, this, this, this was. We apologise for that. We're sorry for any offence. We didn't mean that. It's perfectly, you know, this, this was not intended to offend or upset anyone. Um, you know, and, and so we apologise for that. And we'll make sure it won't happen again in the future. He then finished because this was the end of the summer at the time, he finished by saying, well, you know, we do have a new range of winter clothes coming out, uh, which includes this balaclava. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm making that last bit up. He never brought this out. Right? <laughs> you, can, you cannot buy this balaclava, right? You can't. But that's it's a joke I fucking tagged on the end of this. And I want to make it, I want to make it clear to everyone in here, before anyone starts thinking, I didn't make that, right? That, I, I googled the word gollywog and this fucking thing popped up and I thought I'm having that and this is a gift falling in my lap here to finish this joke. I don't know who made this, I don't know why they made it, I don't want to know why they made it. But what I do know is this, this on its own would have made the video to Lionel Richie's Hello a lot more fucking entertaining. <laughs> now. Obviously, that bit at the end where I hold up a racist caricature of a black person, a gollywog head, a bust, obviously that's a joke. That's not real. The sort of joke being that you're not too sure until I fucking tell you. But it's not real. It's a joke. Well, at least it was until a few days ago when Gucci released this. Ah, ah, ah. Now, I'm not saying, folks, that I'm a prophet. I'm not saying that I'm that damn good. That's for you to discuss. But, Kofladamus fucking strikes again. I don't want to end on a sour note, ladies and gentlemen, so I thought, in closing, I thought we could all enjoy, this is a photograph of Ben Shapiro, and in this photograph, he is holding a normal-sized courtroom gavel. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have enjoyed it, please subscribe and uh, consider uh, consider subscribing to this channel. And if you feel like you want to support my videos and what I do here on YouTube and my podcast, please do consider my supporting my Patreon and or and or and or making a donation via PayPal. Or you can go buy something at the merchandise store. I do have other channels as well, secondary backup channels that I do need because I do tend to fucking disappear quite a lot. And you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook and yada yada. yada. All of the links are below. Plus, I'll leave a link to the playlist where you can go check out my stand-up if you're not familiar with it you are in a, if you haven't seen it before you my friend it's your lucky day other than that folks this has been the brother neuro clock news i hope you've enjoyed it if you want to see this do you want to see this more maybe i could try and do it once a week who knows tell me other than that thank you very much and where there's no sense there's no feeling good night may god be less Fire pot and the goblins are hobbling round coming after us. My 
spirit gets close to that evil and I feel it go Ah, ah, ah We're such self-centered 